Hey guys, Swifty here with another in-depth rookie breakdown video. This is my seventh breakdown video. And as you guys know, I put a ton of work into these. So please, please, if you are a Bear fan, hit that like button. Today's video is on Jatari Carter, the versatile young lineman from Southern University. He was the fourth offensive lineman that Poles took on day three of his first NFL draft. Just because Jatari was the last lineman pick doesn't mean he has the least amount of potential. He is oozing with potential and it's up to the coaches and his work ethic to realize that potential. I still have three full breakdowns coming plus the bonus punter breakdown video. I know you guys wanna see that one. Then we will get back to some all 22 breakdowns on current players and position battles. So let's get into some notes on Jatari Carter. He went to Southern University. He's six foot three, 311 pounds, 23 years old, ran a 5.1340 yard dash, and has 33 and 5 eighth inch arms. He was a four year starter with 37 starts at left tackle. He was a basketball star in high school won the state of Louisiana's Class 1A Most Outstanding Player of the Year award his senior season. He also won the MVP of the championship game with 19 points and 17 rebounds. He played defensive line and tight end during his last two years of high school. In college, he was a first team All-Southwestern Athletic Conference Player of the Year. He has a ridiculous 34 and a half inch vertical leap. It is off the charts for a player of his size. Oh, and according to Carter, he's coming for a starting spot. Quoted, he says, I'm going to go in and try to start. I'm going to try to take a spot. I'm very competitive. When it comes to sports, I want to be the number one person. Let's talk a little bit about his strengths and then we'll get into his weaknesses. Jatari is a smooth and powerful athlete. He scored a 6.87 on the RAS athletic score. He has great speed and is very explosive. He has good agility, but I'm assuming that hurt his score a lot. He has so much power in his hands and great footwork that I see much more athleticism on the field than his score seems to show. He is very quick and light on his feet. He is able to mirror and slide versus pass rushers. His pass blocking is very well-rounded. Carter has solid lateral movement skills and is a tough physical player. He's very disciplined and he doesn't draw many flags. He didn't give up a single sack last year. He stays very busy in the run game. He finds guys to block. He's agile and twitchy as an athlete. He has powerful hands and grip with active feet. He has the ability to be a great blocker on the move and at the second level. He is a smart player who understands angles and leverage. He uses it to his advantage and was able to win most battles without much effort. He showed at the Senior Bowl that he has the strength and ability to hold up versus better competition as well. Also, it's important to note that Carter played left tackle for all of the tape I graded other than his work at the Senior Bowl on the interior. At the Senior Bowl, by the way, I liked him better at left guard than I did right guard. I'll get into that a bit more later. But what about his weaknesses? One of his biggest weaknesses, if we are running an outside zone scheme, is that he's late getting out of his stance more often than you'd like to see. He's very raw and has only played football for six years. He also plays with his pad level way too high in the run game and loses power due to improper technique or hand placement. He has a bad habit of lunging. He didn't dominate or pancake opponents enough, especially considering the competition he faced. He has just average strength. He needs to put in work in the NFL weight room and he needs to work on his technique at the NFL level. What about his long-term potential? I love Jatari's versatility. He is a really, really good pass blocker could be even better inside a guard. He is an above average run blocker, but he needs a lot of work at that at the NFL level. He's making a big jump in competition that held his own at the Senior Bowl. He's very athletic and smart. 
biggest concern to me is that he didn't dominate the competition he faced. So expecting him to do that at the NFL level while making such a huge leap in competition seems highly unlikely. So I think Carter's ceiling isn't as high, especially right off the bat, as some of the other guys on the list. I definitely think he can be a starter in this league, but starting off, he's going to be a versatile and valuable backup, which is not a bad thing at all. What are my expectations for Carter this season? Carter is a hard player to grade. His ceiling isn't quite as high as guys like Braxton Jones or Zachary Thomas. However, his floor is much higher than those guys. If he can add a bit of strength and work on getting out of his stance and improve in the run game, I don't see any reason why Carter can't challenge for a starting right guard spot this summer. Heading into this evaluation, I was all in that it was Carter versus Thomas for the right guard spot. I come out of this eval thinking that Thomas is the better fit for the scheme and the better run blocker. I also think Carter might be more comfortable on the left side. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Thus making Zachary Thomas my favorite to win the right guard spot. That being said, I absolutely love Jatari Carter, and I think he will put in the work needed to become a very good player in the NFL. He can compete for the starting job this year, but he also offers long-term depth as a guy who can come in and play. He is also versatile and can play any spot on the offensive line in a pinch. All right, let's get to his grades. First up, let's talk about his measurables. He has good size and arm length. He has a nice wingspan and the ability to add more strength to his frame. When judging him as a guard, I give him an 8.2 for his measurables. Next up is his athleticism. I see a lot of athletic traits in Jatari's game. He's quick and explosive with great footwork. I give him a 7.9 in athleticism. Next, we'll talk about his run blocking. This is where you see the most holes in Carter's game. He isn't a bad run blocker by any means, but he lacks technique and he doesn't display the power or dominance that he should have. I think with coaching and time in an NFL weight room, he can improve on this drastically. This will determine whether or not he becomes a starter in the NFL. For now, I give him a 6.8 in run blocking. Next up is his pass blocking. Carter is simply a really good pass blocker. He's light on his feet, and there's a reason he started 37 games at left tackle. He was able to neutralize pass rushers. He should be a really good pass blocker inside a guard in the NFL, and I give him an 8.3 in pass blocking. Next up is his technique. Considering how raw he is and how little football experience he has, his technique is very good. He has some holes in his run blocking, but his pass blocking is solid. He is smart and he understands leverage. He still needs a lot of work on his technique though. I give him a 7.2. Overall, I really like Jatari. He is smart and athletic. He can play in the NFL, but he needs to add strength and work on his technique. Overall, I give him a 7.5 out of 10. Let's get to my final thoughts. Carter was the last of the four offensive linemen that Poles picked in this year's draft. While he may not be the most well-known, he does have the IQ, athleticism, and desire to play in the NFL. His family gives him grief all the time. Man used to play basketball. Look at you now, going to the NFL. He grew up idolizing Kobe Bryant and wanting to play in the NBA. He didn't even play football in his first two years of high school. He signed up late just to make the football coach happy and stay in shape. He played defensive line and tight end. Even though he was the MVP and led his team to a championship in basketball, he had more offers to play football. He was recruited by Southern to play the offensive line. He redshirted his first year to learn the position because he had never played the offensive line before. He used the time to hit the weight room and learn how to play O-line. So he is still very raw from a football perspective. His IQ for a guy who hasn't played football very long is very impressive. I heard a lot of scouts doubting his upside, but I have to disagree completely. This is a very athletic and smart football player who is still learning the position and will only get better in time. Carter lost his brother in high school to a car crash. 
As most of you know, I dedicate this entire channel to my little sister and have a lot of love for anyone who has lost a sibling. My favorite quote from Carter was that he hates losing more than he likes winning. I have always shared a similar mindset. I really like this guy. He has an infectious personality and is a player you have to root for. He wears number 69. He's a former stud basketball player turned offensive lineman. He's from a small school. He has that underdog mentality to him, and he's also a Chicago Bear now. I actually liked Carter more than I thought I would. I just think he's not quite as ready for the NFL as I had hoped. I am not counting this guy out. He said it himself. He wants to start. I just think after evaluating both players, Zachary Thomas may be a bit more ready for the right guard spot this year. I see Carter as a guy who is going to be really good in the NFL. I think he could battle for a spot to start this year, but it's more of a long shot. I think there's more question than in time. Fans will know Jatari Carter. Even if he never becomes a long-term starter, he is at the very least an athletic and versatile backup that will look like a pro bowler when compared to guys like Rashawn Coward of the Matt Nagy era. Don't let the Nagy comp take anything away from the point, though. It's just another reminder of how Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham are building this roster from the bottom up. This team will have depth, and the roster will not contain players that don't buy in or can't play. That much is clear, and it's such a change from the past regime. Now they have broken down all four of the offensive linemen from this year's draft class, let's see how they stack up. I gave Braxton Jones a 7.9 out of 10. I gave Zachary Thomas a 7.9 out of 10. Doug Kramer got a 7.7. And then Jatari Carter came in at a 7.5. Both Zachary Thomas and Braxton Jones should come in and compete for day one jobs or at least be quality backups. Jones is already getting time with the first team at left tackle and I believe Zachary Thomas isn't far behind at right guard. I think Kramer would be in a similar position if he was just competing against Mustafer. However, with Lucas Patrick firmly ahead of him on the depth chart, Kramer should be focused on locking down the number two job and learning how to make calls for this line. I see him as a future starter as well. Jatari ends up being my lowest graded of the four, but he still has enough potential to be a starter in the NFL. One final take I have on Carter is that I loved his work at left guard at the Senior Bowl. I think he actually may be more comfortable on the left side and therefore be a better long-term fit at left guard. He is currently listed behind Cody Whitehair and Dieter Iceland at left guard on the depth chart. Maybe it's more realistic that he is in a battle with Dieter for the backup spot behind Cody. I know Whitehair didn't have the best season last year, but he is still a quality NFL guard. He slimmed down a bit and looks like he should be one of our more consistent linemen going into the season. Whitehair is getting older though, and he won't be here long term, so Carter has a chance to lock up the left guard position over the next couple of years. I love this dude and can't wait to see him with the pads on. We will find out so much more about the offensive line once we get to camp and everyone has the pads on. I got my hands on you. It's gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna win every rep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See you <now> in <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna go in. They they have me at like a backup, uh, you know, average person. But I'm gonna go in and try to go start. I'm gonna try to take the spot. Uh, I'm very competitive. So when it comes to sports, I want to be the the number one person. Man, I love this kid. He is legit a baller. You guys saw those dunks, right? This kid has hops. Insane. I love him. I love watching him. I can't wait to see this dude in full pads in Chicago. I think the sky is the limit for this dude. Jatari Carter. Get to learn his name. I know he was a seventh round pick. He's nothing like the seventh round picks we've taken in the past. This guy has legit skills, has never allowed a sack. Four seasons at left tackle, zero sacks allowed. You've got to give this guy some props. I think he's our left guard of the future. Cody Whitehair, you better be on your game because Jatari's coming. He said it himself. Like, 
you guys, we probably brought him in as a backup, but he's coming for that starting spot, and y'all better watch out. I love him. I can't wait to see more of this kid, man. I'm pumped. And by the way, I was trying to figure out which breakdown I wanted to do next. Um, I think I'm saving Elijah Hicks for last because I just love watching that guy. So I was kind of deciding between Dominique Robinson and Tristan Ebner. And let me tell you guys something. I am falling in love with Tristan Ebner. I have to watch more tape. Uh, so I'm doing his breakdown next. I'm sorry, D-Rob. Nothing against D-Rob. I'm so excited about that dude too. Nothing against Elijah Hicks either. You guys know I love him. But oh my goodness, with the running back room we have, if Ebner's as good as I think he can be, watch out. Come back next week, guys. Be sure to turn those notifications on. Join the channel and become a member if you like. You guys know I love you. I appreciate everybody that watches these videos. You guys are legit the best Bear fans alive. The best out there. If you guys watch this channel and you comment on my stuff, you guys are the smartest Bear fans out there. If you haven't hit that like button yet, it's not too late. Hit it now. Also, if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, come join the fastest growing Bears channel in the world. I'm breaking down every rookie we drafted, doing all 22 breakdowns on every player we sign or trade for, covering all the position battles, killing the narratives from the national media, and helping fans get through the long off season. I'll be breaking things down during the week all season long as well. Come along for the ride. We have no special guests for this week's show, but we have a lot planned for the future. We have a brand new front office, new coaching staff, completely new regime overall, a young franchise quarterback, and so much flexibility and cap space moving forward. It's a new era in Chicago, and I couldn't be more excited to be a fan. Stay tuned, and until next time, guys, bear down.